Hello my art loving friends! In today's video we have two fairly new products to check out today. We have the Chiome watercolors or Kiome watercolors depending on which Google pronunciation link you click on and some fun Paul Rubens. I think this is 100% cotton watercolor paper. We will start with these Chow Mei watercolors. Kat's gonna join us because I'm talking to you guys. She always gets very curious. This did come wrapped in plastic, but I had to peek at them when I first got them. So of course the plastic is long gone. It does show the colors on the back here, along with the pigment information, light, fast, and transparency, which is great. Everyone I have seen review these has said that there's kind of a pearl essence cover, but really I think it's just kind of a 3D printed plastic kind of look. I don't really see pearlescence to it, but it's still nice. It's very sturdy. You open it up here and this gives you the look and feel of ceramic, but it's just a heavy duty plastic. And you can put this little piece here. <laughs> That's gonna help. Comes with a little plastic piece here where you can pull this out for easy cleaning. So that's very nice, and it does stay in. It won't just fall out on its own. These are not individually wrapped, which I don't mind at all. <laughs> While it's kind of a nice treat and it's very aesthetically pleasing when they're individually wrapped because it's kind of like little treasures, it does take some time to unwrap them all individually, but this one is just a sticker that goes over all the front and it has the same information as the back of the box, which is the color name, pigment information, light, fastness, and transparency. And it is just a nice heavy duty sticker. And if we pull it off here, it is stuck nicely, quite well. Tried to pull that yellow out, in fact. You can see all the colors underneath. So I think with some trimming, this sticker would actually fit nicely on the back of the swatch sheet that I will probably make for this palette. And I think I will just keep them in the order they came in. It seems like a good order, an order that I wouldn't mind at all. So I'll stick this to a clean place on my desk for now, just to keep the cat hair out of it, if that's even possible. Here they are. So it looks like we have, these two are cracked, Barely and this one has a small crack starting in the corner. Not bad. They are full but not full to the brim Like a couple of them are dipped down a little bit I don't think they're dipped down as drastically as the cameras making it look like with the shadows It's just barely so one really neat thing about this palette is that there are some more rare pigments in here or at least pigments that are becoming more rare because they are stopping production on them at least for now one of the examples of that would be the PO49. There's also a PR206, and I think one of these pigments here, probably the PY65 or the PY175, I can't remember. I think it's the PY175. Well, maybe not. I'll look that up and I'll put that on the screen. And you can get these in tubes. It comes in a 36 set if you get the tubes, but I like to dry my watercolors out anyway, so I requested the dried out pans. I think that's just more useful for me, even though I would appreciate being able to refill them and having more colors. I just also really wanted this palette. It's a really nice palette, heavy duty plastic and fairly slim when it's shut. Here's my cell phone in comparison. I have a Samsung, what do I have? A Galaxy S10. So it's not too far off from a cell phone. Obviously it's bigger, but not too far off and I really like it. So these are not glued in. So if you're going to flip this over to look at the other side, make sure you shut the lid. Then you can flip it over and you can see that it is a contoured palette, individual plastic sections for each pan. So you won't be able to take the black part out like you might be able to in the Mission Gold palette and rearrange things like that. But you can rearrange these as much as you want within the individual pans themselves because they are not glued in. And this is supposed to be so that you can pull these out, but it takes up so much of the space of the gap there itself that it's actually really impossible to use this to pull it out, but it works really well for pulling out the palette up there, the mixing space. So for this, you know, using your fingernail or something different is probably a better option. I don't know, I can't get them out very easily. Holding them and just letting them drop out might be good. I don't know. And as I was doing that, a couple of these 
felt sticky, like I was feeling some stickiness on my hands, although I don't feel that now. Oh, okay, the edges of the pans are feeling sticky, so the pans themselves aren't. It's the black part that's sticky. It's from the sticker. <laughs> so that sticker that was over all of this left some of its sticky residue on a few places. Not all the places, but you can kind of see that here and here and here and there. So we do have a little bit of sticker residue. That'll come right off if we rub it a couple of times. And then I'm going to swatch on Arch's paper here in a minute, but I did want to take a look at this paper and we'll paint with this paper here in a minute. When they first sent this to me, I thought it was hot pressed, but it is definitely cold pressed. It says so right there on the cover. Let's open that up, rip the box, unfortunately. And here's what it looks like inside. It's wrapped in some reclosable plastic. We pull out a sheet. 300 grams. So it feels a little bit thinner than my other 140 pound paper, 300 GSM, but not too bad. I would say the equivalent is probably the B 140 pound paper, which is also 300 GSM. The texture here is a little bit more organic. It's not like that linear one that sometimes really bugs me when I'm painting because you can actually see lines, but it does kind of have a line going up and down just a little bit. The back side is even smoother, but the front side is much smoother than arches or Baohong paper. Let me show you an example here. Okay, so here's the arches paper we are going to swatch on in a minute. So there's the texture difference. Arches, if you can hear it, that's arches. Here's the Paul Rubens. Just a slight smoother, not slight, but Quite a different smoother texture. It feels pretty good though. I think they both feel kind of soft. I actually don't know if this is cotton. It says cotton pulp on the cover. If you do a Google Translate on the box, one of these says cotton pulp. So what does cotton pulp mean? I will look that up and put that on the screen. So we'll try this a little bit later. I'll go ahead and seal this and put it back for now. Keep it as safe as possible. I have some Paul Rubens sketchbooks that are hot pressed and because they're hot pressed, they aren't my favorite. They're very smooth. They're probably great for ink or colored pencil, but for watercolor, I really like the cold press. So for watercolor, the paper that I love to use from them is this Paul Rubens glitter paper. And this is also 300 grams. It's a delight to work on. I've worked on both sides of it too, and it's equally glittery on both sides, and it seems to paint the same on both sides, and it's one of my favorite papers. So I'm hoping this will be good, because it'll be cotton paper, at least cotton pulp paper. I still need to look that up before I tell you guys everything. And hopefully it'll be a great alternative to Arches. And I just had the college buy a new pad of Arches cold press paper, and the sizing is all messed up on it. Yeah, so this is the pad I had them buy and they bought it fresh and new right then and there. But, and we did this painting inspired by Paul Clark, but yeah, the sizing's messed up. Let me show you that painting. I was able to get away with the painting because it's in the bridge section, but can you see these white lines? These little edges. It's just a little white edge there, here, and over here, no matter what we did, we couldn't cover up those white lines. And it wasn't our painting style, it wasn't anything like that, it was the paper. And I have heard that newer batches of arches are having some sizing issues, so finding alternative papers is always a good idea. All right, let's see what these colors look like on really nice paper, because so far, my arches large block of paper here, <laughs> still has good sizing on it. And it looks like some of my tape has come up, so I'll put my sleeve over my hand and really push these down. Hopefully they'll be okay. And we'll see what these beautiful colors look like in this 24 half pan set. 
In the interest of time, I actually left that part out. Sorry, but it'll be available for my Patreons later this month, hopefully. And you can go check that out over there. The link for my Patreon is down in the description box below. I do give them some videos that you don't see here, which is kind of fun. And look at these colors. They're all so pretty. The only thing I didn't like, I think, was a couple of the browns. And when I first put that cerulean blue hue down, I had to pick up the box and look at the pigment again because it said PB15, but when you first lay it down, it acts a lot like a PB33, which is very interesting. But now that it's dried down, I can tell it's a little bit more of a PB15 with some white in it, but that was... Yeah, I had to take a double double check on that one. <laughs> Look at that burnt sienna. That burnt sienna actually reminded me a lot of the Beam Paints burnt sienna. It was kind of weak, low tinting, hard to re-wet, but that Van Dyke Brown is beautiful. And just because I left out that other swatching, I thought I would at least leave this in. I know it's sped up, but it's just a swatch sheet. <laughs> but at least you can see kind of what the paints look like going down on paper for a swatch. Mm -hmm. And also this is the paper, the Paul Rubens paper that we're gonna try in an actual painting a little bit later in this video. And even though I do that painting, it's not using enough of the colors to give you guys and me a good idea of how these paints perform. So in the meantime, because I'm gonna keep using these eventually, in the meantime, I will link the three other artists here on YouTube that have reviewed these that I can think of off the top of my head. I know the Frugal Crafter has done it. I believe Sandrine over at Sandrine's Gallery, maybe. I can't remember if it was her or Ev Bolt, but I will find that video and link that. And then there was one other lady here that uh, reviewed these. So I'll find those and I'll link them for you so you can watch their reviews, especially Lindsay, the Frugal Crafter. She's always very thorough. And for the painting, we're gonna run through the full gamut here. You can see that I have taped it down, so we're gonna test tape on the paper. You can see I have a part of it masked off, so we'll be testing masking fluid on it. And I also have it completely covered in water, so we'll get to test that as well, how it takes water, how much it warps. Granted, this is pretty thin paper even for the 300 grams, but it, still, I wanna see how it warps when it's taped down. Some were worse than others, even when taped, but this one actually seemed okay. So you can see the colors are reactivating pretty easily over there actually, and I am mixing the indigo with a little bit of black. I don't put a whole lot of black in that. I actually started with the cobalt blue hue or whatever that one is called, and mixed that with the indigo at first, and then I decided I needed to darken it up just a little bit, so I put a little bit of that ivory black in there. Yeah, cobalt blue hue. And then we're doing some spattering. So this is a Paul Clark inspired painting. This is one of his, basically a tutorial over on his channel. I am in this mindset lately where I really, really want to paint, but for the life of me, I just cannot think of what to paint. Like I cannot be creative on my own currently. So. It's been kind of discouraging because I really, really am excited about putting color down on paper, but I just can't think of anything. But it's just a stage. It's not like artist block exactly because I'm dying to paint and draw and all of that. So it's more like I just can't be creative right now. <laughs> so, oh, the masking fluid. I was trying to be so, so careful here and it ripped the paper badly. And this masking fluid is usually pretty gentle. It's usually more gentle than the PBO that I often use. This was the Windsor & Newton. And the paper was 100% dry, and you could see it was in the middle, actually, of that coat area that ripped. So nothing to do with having painted around it. It just didn't like masking fluid. In fact, later on, it also doesn't like the tape removal. So this paper is fragile, keep that in mind. You might be able to use masking fluid in small areas because it came off on the edges and whatnot just fine, but once it got into a big area, it just failed. 
So it didn't seem to overly dull out the paint so once it dried. Of course, there was a bit of a drying shift. You probably saw that switch from wet paint to dry paint here on the video. But when I'm looking over at it, it's right next to my computer right now while I'm talking to you guys. It's still very nice and dark up there in that sky tree area. It's kind of a forest area, probably more than a kind of sky, but it's still pretty dark up there. So I... I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the way it dried. I knew it would lighten up, so I tried to make the colors up there as dark as I wanted. And that the browns, though, guys, we got to talk about the browns in this set because it doesn't have a yellow ochre or a raw sienna. So what I did was kind of mix some of the browns with the, which one was it? Cadmium, no, the Gamboge Hue, the PY153, and that was the only way I could get any kind of glow to it because the browns are really dull with the exception of the Van Dyke brown. That's a nice dark brown that I really like. But yeah, I just didn't like the browns. But, I, you know, raw umber to start out with is not a favorite of mine anyway. The burnt sienna in this set is just a little bit weird, a little bit weak like I talked about. Reminded me of that Bean Paints burnt sienna and... I don't know. I didn't use the burnt umber as much as I should have. I probably should have tried that one as opposed to the raw umber and burnt sienna, but mixing it with a gamboge hue gave me that kind of yellow ochre glow that I was looking for in that background behind the, in front of, actually, in front of the girl, to the left of the girl and the dog. But here I was using the cadmium red deep hue on the skirt and her hat. That color is just beautiful. Not surprising, it has a PR254 in it. That's one of my most favorites. So here you can see I'm scrubbing or was scrubbing on the paper to try and just have that skirt blend into the background and a soft edge also against the lantern edge. And this paper also cannot take scrubbing. <laughs> so it pretty well tore the paper immediately. Uh, I got away with it. Uh, it actually looks fine now that I'm looking at it here, but while I was scrubbing, it felt like it was tearing the paper. So I kind of was just super, super gentle and stopped as soon as I possibly could. But you can see I did get it softer. And like I said, looking at it now, it looks fine. It doesn't look all torn up, but anyway, there is that. So here's the bleed proof white for some snowdrops, but I went a little too watery. <laughs> a big glob there. I was like, I don't know what to do with that because I know that's not going to come up. So I just blotted it. It's fine. It looks fine. I don't know. Maybe someone's throwing a snowball at her. We'll go with that, right? So the verdict is the palette is absolutely adorable. I love it. I'm glad I have it. I have no idea for sure about the paints. I need to paint with them more. Sorry, one painting is not enough for me to tell you guys what I think, but I didn't dislike them. They didn't bug me except the burnt sienna and I definitely need to work with the paper more. So just stay tuned to my channel. Subscribe if you want to kind of see this journey and how this goes and when I use these again. It'll be a while. I have a few other things to do first but they are on the list and in the queue. Well thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you at least found it interesting and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. So one neat thing about the pa excuse you Miss I love tape and can't leave it alone over there. Oh my goodness, I have a tape dispenser out and she just cannot leave it alone. She loves the sticky on her whiskers and uh, it's just so weird. She's over there licking it. I gotta go get her. Oh no, dropped some. So some Paul, wow, that came right out the bottom. <laughs> Oops, oh wait, oh wait, oh, it's an envelope majigger. Got it, well that's kinda handy. Wish I'd have remembered that or known that before I ripped the top of it. Are you helping us garden? Show him the fresh dirt again, honey. Sure. <laughs> You're so helpful. <laughs> what do you think, Jack? Look at your dirty nose. <laughs> <laughs> He's just in it for the lab of poop. Right, probably so. <laughs>